Hello, we hope you're doing well. Welcome back to the Breaking Esports News episode. We hope you guys all enjoyed your weekend. Tons of great stories happening so far, which will all be timestamped down below. But as always, let's get into it. In the big CSGO news this past weekend, it was actually more stuff coming out on Smuya. In fact, uh, pretty much half the entire organization have now responded to allegations over there after Smuya uh, tweeted out some suspicious things this last week and eventually deleted those tweets, which will be on screen for all of you. Of course, the latter one saying five Germans is better than four. It does seem now the big manager himself, as well as the big co-founder, as well as one of their players, have all come forward denying rumors that he will be leaving the organization. All the rumors out there was not the fact that he was going to be uh, kicked at all or going to be, uh, he was actually going to be, in fact, leaving on his own and potential rumors out there do say that apparently he was actually looking for other teams out there who would pay him more. Now, of course, going forward, it does seem very obvious Big will keep him in the roster with a major coming up. Not only do they need him, but as well as on his own part, incentively, he will have sticker money coming in for that team. So likely to stay with the roster for the prolonged future. No one knows it was an issue for a few days over there. Maybe it's been resolved by now, but there were definitely rumors out there of him potentially leaving Big, but they might have been quelled or quelled by now. But we're going to see going forward what actually happens with that whole Big situation. Now, going forward as well more rumors did spread no real news out there no official news about this as to why Rops posted this on his Instagram of course with that quote clearly saying time is running out the speculation pointing towards maybe his contract ends with mouse sports maybe he's going to go somewhere else after the major again one of those things we'll have to wait and see what this actually means if it's a bait if it's a troll or if it's a subtle hint at the future and not really being too subtle if it does come true now also we had a bunch of roster changes happening this past weekend with some smaller rosters out there former NIP member himself that's actually Pith has now joined Paper Planes he does join alongside Hems. Hems was actually a part of that Wind and Rain roster who disbanded last week as well. Now, on top of that, we also had Pride Gaming. They got rid of two of their members last week. They have now finalized that five-man roster with their brand new roster. And very lastly as well for roster changes, it's actually Crystal officially joining Ghost Gaming in place of Poyo for the next two events. We'll see what this roster does in the future. So far, we're not really sure about the IGL standpoint for that team. They already had an IGL with Steel on that team as well. So we're not really sure what role he's going to fit as of right now. But going forward, Crystal has solidified his spot on that team and also very lastly speaking of a, a newer team out there Movistar Riders of course the newest addition being Mixwell some other uh, uh, Spaniard players as well on that roster they have officially qualified for their first big land it will be MSI MGA in New York and it's gonna be a pretty cool thing to see these four teams compete no one really sure exactly of course it's not the biggest co competition going there but still a 60k prize pool and definitely a big proving grounds for this new Mixwell Movistar team it's gonna be very cool to see actually how they do against teams like Complexity, teams like Five Power and again gonna be cool to see how they come out of that event. And also, finally, guys, we've been waiting, of course, talking about this over the past few weeks. We have TI8 finally starting this week. It's going to be very cool to see how this prize pool does end up. Of course, many of you guys are well aware that prize pool will continue to go out for the next five days, and we're now pretty much exactly on point with TI7's prize pool. Of course, it does not seem very likely we're going to see a, a huge surge here, but the, I think the overall goal right now is just to beat last year's prize pool, whether it's by a few thousand dollars or a few uh, ten thousands of dollars. It does seem right now it's going to be very close to TI7's prize pool, but also more updates on that, guys, as well. We did have Slack series uh, actually finish up this past uh, this past weekend as well on the Dota 2 official YouTube channel. If you guys have not seen this, Slack does a great job recapping all of those international teams. So links will be down below for all of that. He does a great job recapping every single international competing team. It's going to be really cool to see exactly how this actually does play out. I cannot wait for this upcoming weekend, guys, how the group stages are going to go. But also on top of that, it does seem for the talent pool as well. Uh, there was actually kind of a leaked post or a post last week that was kind of surfaced out of nowhere that apparently Admiral Bulldog could actually make it on time to be part of that TI8 talent list. It seems very unlikely though because of course checking his Twitter he has no update ever since his last update about why he actually could not travel to Canada this time given his uh, his history which never really caused him an issue until of course this past month. So it seems very unlikely he will be there guys but of course there was that sliver of hope so I guess we'll find out this weekend if it actually does go through. So TI8 starting this week I cannot wait to see how it goes down. And also in very big Fortnite news out there, of course, Skirmish Series Week 5 did continue. Another successful week, in my own opinion. It was actually our first ever kill incentivized or kill prioritized event as well. And it was mainly eliminations that got you points, as well as victory royales, which gave you bonuses. And if you got 7 plus eliminations with your partner, it was actually another bonus as well for your next match. But again, it was all heavily focused on eliminations. It was actually very cool to see as well. We have Not Vivid and Poach, again, taking another weekend event together. They continue their dominating run. It was actually those two, Not Vivid and Poach, going 1-2 in last week 
weekend solo event and they continue to actually prove how good they are together. It was also people in duos like Courage and Hysteria going forth. It was Tifu and Cloaksley who, who were probably expected to be one of the favorites here going into the event. They round out the top five and it was also Ghost Gaming having four members all together placing the second and third place spots. So that was your top five there guys. A great weekend event and Saturday continued that. It was actually Atlantis's Mitro taking another weekend victory alongside his partner. If you guys remember it was actually back in week three he had another a victory there. So we're definitely seeing over the course of these five weeks who our better players are when it comes to Friday and Saturday events. But it was very cool to see as well. We also had teams like uh, the Zypher squad as well as the AGO and Kingwin having squads all round out that top five over there or the top ten as well. So really cool to see these really close results. But unfortunately enough it was actually taking light away from this. It was a big dramatic event. I don't know why this resurfaced. If you guys remember it was actually a couple weeks ago on stream people were clipping some random things about Ninja coming forward on why he does not stream with other women or other female streamers, other female players out there. And it kind of came back in a huge controversy. Polygon was the first one to cover it out there. And it was actually very importantly to state as well. It's come back and resurfaced again. But here's what Ninja had to say about that. He actually took forward with them and stated, if I have one conversation with one female streamer when we're playing with one another, and even if there's a hint of flirting, that is going to be taken and going to be put on every single video and be clickbait forever. And I really do have to agree with the guy. Of course, there's going to be a bunch of backlash for this, uh, mainly from a lot of female streamers out there. Just in general, females uh, in the scene right now, if you're really responding to this and calling it sexist and calling it uh, kind of an, an act for a feminist movement to come up out of this, I really don't think it should be too dramatic of a story. And as well, he made sure to clarify it's his own decision. It's not his wife's decision. It's not her being jealous of him playing with other people. It was solely his decision going forward to not play with them. And it's pretty much, uh, I guess you could say, based off that statement, to avoid all the clickbait and, of course, probably to avoid making his wife angry based off instances that really should not make, uh, should not even be dramatic at all. So going forward, it seems he will continue not to play with those female streamers and that probably shouldn't be in the news but that was what really took away from skirmish series week five but week six does continue this week and i cannot wait to see what the tournament format will be if epic does respond as well i know there was a few games out there that kind of did slow down the pace people thought that elimination prioritized event would be a lot heavier kill base and there still were some slow games out there so i cannot wait to see how epic responds for this week number six of the skirmish series and of course, before we get into our Monday breakdown of the LCS matches, which I cannot wait for, it's definitely by far and away, you guys, if you're uh, fans of the show, know that's my favorite segment to cover so far. I do want to cover as well, for all you League of Legends fans out there, all you MMO fans out there as well, we do have a potential, I guess you could say, foreshadowing of things to come from Riot Games. It was actually Riot Meddler, who will now be our lead designer, and he's taking that position from Ghost Crawler, who will now be the lead of creative development. Now, I actually want to say as well, it's very important what he said. It was very curious, as he did state, while telling stories is really important to us, there is a limit to the kind of stories we can tell in League without getting in the way of a competitive multiplayer game. He also further alludes to the fact that Rune Terra, the map expansions, as well as the character, if you guys saw the Rise video, those character creation videos they do on YouTube, the cinematics, which are amazing to do, he really does foreshadow to the fact they cannot actually, uh, they cannot tell this story inside the game of League itself in the current game. So it does seem to be, in my own opinion, I don't know what you guys think about this, maybe League is actually, or Riot's actually foreshadowing a future game for them, whether it's going to be a focus on the Rune Terra map, but how else could they tell these stories, guys? How better could they tell these stories than with an MMORPG all based around the League of Legends characters? That's just my own opinion. It does seem, though, that Ghost Crawler was softly alluding to maybe a, a prolonged future different game for Riot. And of course, in big news for NALCS out there, my favorite segment to cover. And again, the playoff race does continue for North America and Europe. I will cover that in a bit here as well. That's kind of a not necessarily a close race anymore, but the North American crazy race does continue. I hope you guys all got a chance to actually watch this past weekend as Cloud9's run has only almost come to fruition. They have now won six straight matches, and this past weekend they do so in the ballsiest fashion that we probably could project. It was actually in match two. They won match one against Golden Guardians pretty convincingly. It was match two. They brought in almost half a different roster. They actually do replace Jensen alongside Blabber with Sven Skirin and Golden Glue, and they do so in match two against Team Liquid, obviously one of the better teams this split. And so, of course, a ballsy acquisition there for the new roster, but they showed themselves supremely and actually go on to dominate Team Liquid, and it was Sven Skirin on Lee Sin going 4-0 early game. I think it was within 20 minutes. He was already 2-0, 3-0 on, on, on Lee Sin. So he really carried that game. They look so dominant. And again, they go 2-0 this weekend. They've won six straight and they've almost solidified. They've almost come to fruition of this miraculous miracle run here to actually make playoffs. They actually have a really good chance. Only probably have to win one game next weekend. Might not have to win any of them. And also in big news as well, we have CLG taking their sixth, uh, forgive me, their eighth straight loss, which is almost, it's hard to say guys, eight straight losses, four straight 0-2 weekends, but also the teams who really needed to win here, they came away with 
2-0 victories. TSM and FlyQuest also go 2-0, and it is now solidified, guys, a five-team race for four playoff spot. Like I said earlier, Team Liquid 100 Thieves have secured their spots. It is now Optic, TSM, Echo Fox, Cloud9, and FlyQuest all winning the games they need to, and they're going to compete for four last spots here. It does seem going forward as well. It's most likely Optic or TSM. One of those teams will not go forward, but I cannot wait to watch Week 9, the final weekend, as these teams compete for the four final spots, guys. And again, pretty much down to those five teams. It really comes down to, as well, the bottom of the bracket. What teams can upset these guys' hopes and keep them away from playoffs? And like I said previously, the European side of things, just the way this weekend worked out, it is now completely different. We pretty much have solidified these top six teams as our six playoff teams. It was all the teams who really needed to win came away with 2-0 victories. Most importantly, we did, of course, see Fnatic with Reckless's return in the top lane for Soaz. He looked almost like his good old self. So it was really kind of reassuring for all you Fnatic fans out there. Uh, they're not competing against, you know, the top teams out there, but still two important victories. They pretty much have solidified their first place spot. But again, it's actually most importantly, Rawcat, who go 0-2 this weekend, dropping two games, very important games as well, have pretty much almost gifted Splice their spot into the playoffs and into that top six. On top of that, though, it's also FC Schalke, G2. They also go 2-0, very important victories to solidify their spots. So far going forward, it's actually Rawcat, who have to beat Misfits and Fnatic next weekend just to have a chance. And on top of that, Splice have to go 0-2. One of their games is also against Giants. So a very unlikely situation here, guys. Rawcat have almost solidified their spot out of playoffs and have pretty much gifted Splice a gift into the top six. But European LCS, so much different from NA LCS. We'll cover more stuff come here Wednesday, guys, as LCK is also wrapped up. But some big stuff coming soon. The Cloud9 comeback has pretty much come to fruition. And also, of course, we have to have a controversy in Overwatch as well. We kind of, no surprise, we had XQC come back with another temporary ban on his main account as well. This time around, though, a bit more suspicious because no one could actually find a, a real instance throughout his stream which got him banned out of nowhere. It does seem, as he kind of alluded to, to be a manual ban this time around. But also, most importantly, with the Overwatch World Cup coming up, him, of course, being a part of Team Canada, it does seem this might affect it, although most likely going forward, just because he has a main account temporary ban, it should not affect his Overwatch World Cup play. Team Canada made sure to clarify on Twitter they will not make roster changes and it does seem going forward he still will be on that team for Overwatch World Cup it does come around to the fact though is it just his constant nabbing about the game that got him banned if that's the case then Blizzard should really come forward and really admit to uh, they don't like that or maybe exactly what he said that was wrong he for now he did take the Twitter though to apologize it might have been his in-game talk of course maybe more of one of the I wouldn't say talk okay maybe a bit toxic in game so no one could really think of an instance in game that got him this temporary ban so maybe it was a manual ban this time around Around, but it does seem going forward XQC will be able to compete at World Cup no matter what and uh, will he continue to see these bans in the future or will they become more permanent in the future that's the real big question but also some more drama over there over our new legendary uh, Tracer and Genji skins for All-Star Weekend the controversy this time around if you guys remember back to when the Mercy skin was released for the fundraiser uh, that was actually for the Breast Cancer Research Foundation so all proceeds did go to charity but there were still people out there complaining about the $15 skin it does seem going forward though most importantly the price point for these skins, legendary and all-star skins, whatever might come out on a special weekend, it does seem the price point seems to be about $15. That's what you're going to have to pay or 300 Overwatch League tokens for each the Genji and the Tracer skins. This time though, I think that this time around the complaints are more so definitely reasonable in their cause. I'm not really sure if $15 per skin is where they want to be, although it's it's not necessarily uh, too high of a price because you can also earn those Overwatch League skins. The main complaints coming probably from people who actually spent their Overwatch League tokens earlier on in the season on some of their favorite heroes and other uh, the skins they play with so uh, it kind of goes both ways here but it does seem going forward more complaints this time around because of course there's no charity behind it it does seem blizzard getting a bit greedy but you know games got to make their money and also, very lastly, in Rocket League news out there, guys, the controversy is now over as PSG has apparently officially released Bluey from that roster. It was actually last week we talked about this where Bluey was apparently being held hostage on that team uh, in that sub role. He wanted, of course, play for a main team. He was playing with several teams out there, several different assortments. He has now officially been released and can play with whoever he wants, and he took no time at all to actually announce his new roster, which will be Devo alongside Alpha and Jesse as their sub player. If you guys remember, for the European Season 2 Universal Qualifiers, it was him and Jesse as a duo. It didn't go quite their way, but it's great to see players like that really stick together on top of that speaking of season two universal we have now finalized all eight of our teams for that tournament going forward it will be team momentum out of the u.s west region to be our last team to actually qualify looking pretty dominant and carrying that momentum throughout the entire qualifier as well luckily enough for them not having to face g2 throughout the entire event who is likely going to be your favorite team going into the event uh, with how they look throughout the open qualifiers but they actually placed dead last in fourth place and it was team momentum who beat eg in two best of fives to actually grab that last spot for season two universal 
Universal. It's going to be great to see how those eight teams do compete, but also bouncing off that, guys, very lastly in today's news, we actually have a new Rocket League main event uh, record set, that for the longest game of all time, any main event, and that will be a 23-plus minute game between Team Vitality and alongside that Team Dignitas before Fairy Peak actually took the last goal here, guys. It was 18 minutes and 9 seconds into overtime, which is absolutely insane. That takes the record for biggest or longest main event game in Rocket League history. So hope you guys all enjoyed this episode of Esports News. If you guys did, please leave a comment down below how we did, what did we miss, and we will see you guys all back here Wednesday for another great episode. We hope you guys all enjoy, and we'll see you then.